Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher. Welcome to All About Canadian Books. This week's writing tip and author reading is from Catherine Gordier. Now, Catherine and I just chatted about her journey through grief. Um, a great behind the book story for her, her memoir, Breathe, Cry, breathe. And if you missed that interview, I'm going to put a link down below so you can watch it. So Catherine, I'm sure there are many people out there who have played with the idea of writing their memoir. And you have written a very brave memoir where you dig into your grief, your journey through it. Um, very, very powerful novel. What would you say to others who are who are pondering writing their memoir? I would say write from your heart and your gut. Um, I would say like I I I speak about my uh, my drinking mm -hmm. um, openly. Um, I would write write your truth, yeah. speak your truth, and because you will find that. You're not the only one yeah. that is grieving the way you are. Mm -hmm. There are others out there. I've received so many letters of saying, oh, thank you for letting me know that I don't have to grieve the same way as my sisters were grieving. Yeah. Or So I would just say, oh, speak your truth. Yeah, that's beautiful. I Thank you. Thank you for that, Catherine. And Catherine is also going to read an excerpt from her memoir. So Catherine, whenever, whenever you're ready. Hey. Uh, the accident happened in front of our family home. It's just the short drive to 491 Days Road. Our family home was a blur. Flashing lights of police cruisers and yellow tape blocked the commotion, which seemed to be unfolding at the end of our driveway. Shedding my vampire cape, I stepped up to the barricade and searched the darkness for my father. I saw cops and bystanders, but not family. Inside the blockade, I recognized Tina, a nurse who sang in the church choir. Tina approached me, which one are you? Even without Halloween makeup, people often couldn't tell us Gordier sisters apart. Catherine. Tina hesitated. It's serious. She clutched my arm. Catherine, Julie was struck too. I locked eyes with her. How serious, very serious. I ran back to the car and crumpled into the car seat. Mom's fragile. She's almost 80, I said, looking straight ahead. And my sweetie pie, how could this happen? They were walking home from church for Christ's sake. Why today? We're having a surprise party. This is not good, Dawn. 10 minutes later, we pulled into the emergency entrance to Kingston General Hospital. I leapt out of the car before Dawn had time to shift into park. We stormed into the reception area looking like characters from Night of the Living Dead and headed for the emergency ward. Locked double doors prevented our entrance. We stopped at a loss. The patients in the waiting room stared at us. A nurse, realizing who we were there to see, took out a pass key and opened the doors. She guided us to a dimly lit room. It was a room that was meant to feel cozy like a living room, but it didn't. Dad, my sister Nancy and her husband were already there. I don't recall who else. All I remember is my father's forlorn face. He sat in a wing back chair in the corner. When he saw me, he leaned forward and using the arms of the chair for support, stood up. His bushy brows framed sad, frightened eyes. She's not gonna make it, Kath. My father showed no sign of noticing that I was dressed like a vampire, fake blood dripping from the corners of my mouth. He only saw me. Ordinarily, he would have joked saying something sarcastic, like, I thought this was a costume party. When are you going to get made up? Followed by a jovial laugh. He looked me straight in the eyes. I saw her rolling down the road. She's not going to make it. All I could do was hug him and pray. I was praying when a nurse entered the family lounge. The doctor will be here shortly, she said. We're waiting for everyone to arrive. During the next few minutes, more siblings, their spouses, and some of my older nieces filled up the room. We waited, sitting, standing, pacing, leaning against the walls. No one said a word. I thought back to 30 years earlier when mom had been hit crossing Day's Road, injuring her right hip and thigh, 
During surgery, the doctor removed a chunk of fat, resulting in slimmer physique on that side, she'd joke. Now, can you do the same to my other hip? I drifted into the quiet hallway and pressed my face against the wall, feeling its coolness on my cheek. The silence made sense. This was where people waited to hear if their loved one was going to live or die. I leaned in, my lips almost touching the wall that separated us from the emergency ward, I whispered. Mom, you have to live, okay? Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. You're strong. Mom, blessed art thou amongst women and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, only Mary, mother of God, don't die, Mom. Please don't die. Just as I took a deep breath to prepare myself to see the sad faces of my family, an orderly walked by and gave me the once over. I'd forgotten I was a vampire. Back in the lounge, I felt queasy as I watched my family slowly pacing back and forth across the room like the zombies some were still dressed as. The whole scenario felt so unreal that without thinking, I blurted, I feel like I'm in a Grey's Anatomy episode. My family just stared back at me. Oh, Catherine, <laughs> thank you. That was Catherine Gordier reading from her novel, her memoir, excuse me, Breathe, Cry, Breathe. I will put links down below so you can go to Catherine's website, purchase a copy of her memoir. And before we leave, I'll just mention that next week would have been Catherine's sister's Julie's 52nd birthday. And it's been 12 years since the accident. And she has written this incredible memoir, her journey through grief. I highly recommend it. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, Crystal. Thank you for watching.